What is good, everybody? Welcome to Stats and Cone here on the Gold Standard Podcast Network. I'm Rob Stats Guerrero. He is Grant Cone. Grant, first time we're coming on after a loss in in six weeks. I don't like it. I do. Now <laughs> we have something to talk about. I feel like the conversation is more interesting in all sports after a loss because the conversation is what went wrong, what do they need to fix, who's the problem, all that. So who's not the problem? After a win, the conversation is, this guy's good. That guy's good. Don't forget about that guy. He's good too. This whole team is really good, right. which is fun, I think, for fans. But for me, it's like, man, this conversation is going nowhere. Well, especially because they had won six straight by 12 or more points. So, like, it yeah. really, like, there, there was nothing to complain about because they were no. just destroying people. Still not- good. Still the best team. Now right. it's like, oh, they're not the best team. They're still good, but they're not the best team necessarily. Okay, let's talk. We're going to get into that. I'm going to defend Kyle Shanahan because at least in my mentions, people are coming after Kyle, and I don't think it's fair. We'll talk about Brock Purdy. Uh, The Commanders just made an announcement that affects the 49ers this week, so we'll dive into all of that. But before we get anywhere, I want to give a shout-out to Community Tree Service, LLC, our new YouTube partners here. Thank you. We're so pleased and privileged to have you as a friend of the show, and they do anything you need for your yard. So land clearing, tree trimming, Hazard tree removal, home fire hardening, which I didn't know was a thing, but is an actual thing. Debris removal. If you are anywhere from the Central Coast up to the Bay Area, Community Tree Service will take care of you. And estimates are free. So just call 831-763-2391 or email estimating at cts831.com now to schedule an appointment. Mention you're a Niner fan. Get $200 off. If you mention you're a Raven fan, they will add $200 to your quote. So please don't do that. Community Tree Service is licensed by the California State License Board. License number 1100816. First thing we got to do, Grant, is mention a very happy 24th birthday to Brock Purdy. 49ers quarterback turns 24 years old today. Probably not how he wanted to be celebrating his... uh, birthday but i think it's pretty amazing that he's 24 years old he's coming off career saving elbow surgery in the off season and he's gonna break the 49er single season passing yardage record he needs 114 yards in the next two each of the next two games to tie the record he's definitely gonna do that and he could if he goes nuts with some touchdowns tie or break the Niners single season touchdown pass record I don't think that's how he's looking at it. I don't know. Maybe not. The way I look at it is he had this really like uh, storybook start in his career, you know, had, had a had a run that 22 year olds and 23 year olds really don't have. And that ended at midnight, like two days before his 24th birthday. It's not that he's not a good quarterback, but he came back to reality right before he turned 24 because everyone has to live in reality. Eventually we knew that life wasn't going to be this easy for Brock Purdy forever. Like it's not this easy for every, for anyone. Um, So he had to come back to reality. He came back right before he turned 24. And now we get to see how he responds. Is he thinking about all the blessings he's had in his career so far? Or is he thinking about, man, I had my opportunity to cement myself as that dude on that stage in front of everyone. And not only did I not do it, but I threw no touchdowns of four picks and got benched. I, I had my, I saved my worst for the most important moment of my career. And God, like, I know how that feels. I think people can relate to that when you have something that means a lot to you, something that you're looking forward to, something that you want to put your best foot forward in, and you just happen to fall on your face. You don't just not put your best foot forward, but you completely embarrass yourself and you leave feeling like a shame, like, man... Is that who I am? Did I just define myself? Is that how people are going to remember me? And you're just, so it's like, I don't know. Let's see how he approaches the next seven games if they have them. And maybe, maybe that's the, the bitter disappointment he needs to maintain a standard of play. And we never see that again. It's going to be really interesting to see what Brock. He just had an awful game and, and I pointed it out immediately after the game. And I've pointed it out multiple times since. He's not alone. That happens to every quarterback. It has happened to the greatest of the great have had four interception games. Tom Brady had six of them. Peyton Manning had six of them. Dan Marino had two. Drew Brees had two. Even the great Joe Montana had a four interception game. Peyton Manning had a six interception game. Like, it happens. And Brock really hasn't had, like, 
disaster of a game. That was a disaster. And you could say, well, some of the interceptions were tipped and the ball. No. No, it was just a disaster. I put them all on him because he had some other ones that weren't picked that could have been picked. It, it, it got worse. It got worse as it went on. It was a total yeah. train wreck. You're like yep. watching it like, oh, no, Brock. No. Yeah. Like, Oh, not again. Like, come on. Man, we're all pulling for you, man. This is terrible. You know what? Like, it's just, a, it's just not your night. You know what? Just, just let Sam finish this one up, uh, flush it, and, and do better the next time. Because we all yes. know you're better than this. We all know you're better than this, and people have bad games. But, damn, that was bad. And you know what? At least it happened in the regular season. At least it happened against an AFC team. There are some factors that at least made it a little easier to swallow. Um, and just... Scrub it and move on. And, and we don't, we haven't really seen Brock come back from these like disaster of game. Like there was no positive to take from Brock in this game. And it's probably the only start he's ever had where I could say that. So we're going to see how he bounces back. I thought he was very honest in the post game press conference talking about how he started to basically press a little bit. When he, yeah. when he struggled, no he was like, I got to make a play. And he got away. He got outside of himself. And then that usually makes you get into more trouble, especially when, and let's be honest, you don't have that kind of alien mutant arm. And he didn't have that. So we've seen something now, a pattern with Brock Purdy. When things are going well, which is most of the time on the 49ers, he's great. But when things go sideways, when things go not according to plan, sometimes he has a tendency to press which is really the opposite of what makes him so good. When, when things are going well, he's very calm, poised, mature, which is like, exact. he's got perfect quarterback demeanor. But in these games, which are rare for the 49ers, where they're losing or they're facing another really good team, he can press. And that's a really troubling pattern. Like He needs to end that pattern. Otherwise, he's not the Niners franchise quarterback. Otherwise, he doesn't deserve $50 million a year. But you know what? He's not in these situations very much. I, I sympathize with him. It's new, it's new ground for him. And uh, he can improve. This is perfect. Like you said, happened in the regular season. It, it really couldn't have played any worse. So <laughs> feel, feel the same. Humble yourself. You're not going to win the MVP. Like you, you, don't, you don't deserve those accolades. But forget the MVP. What matters is winning the Super Bowl. And if this is the whatever humbling experience, the reality check, the wh whatever you want to call it that you needed, to never press again, never have this happen. Great. This is the, then this was a good loss in that sense. It's a learning experience. And Steve Young talked about this on KMBR earlier this year. Like there's stuff that's going to happen to Brock and we don't know how he's going to respond. And even Brock doesn't know how he's going to respond because it literally hasn't happened before. And we'll see how he bounces back. But I think with maturity and look, he literally is 24. He, he has a handful of starts in the league. He'll realize that the way to to make a play happen is not to try to force it to happen. It's to just stay within yourself like that will actually get you out of the hole you're in, especially with Shanahan and all the playmakers around you. We don't need you to ever be Superman like that, like that. Is, it's not you're on a team and in a situation where we never need that from you. And I think that he will learn it. But and games like this are part of the reason why. I think it was an important growing experience for Brock Purdy. I feel like I'm over empathizing with him today. I'm usually really hard on him, but now I'm like, I'm being very empathetic with him. Um, I think, okay, let's go back to the Jacksonville game, all right? That was after the bye week. He was coming off a three-game losing streak. He was getting a lot of uh, criticism. He comes out against Jacksonville, I think it was the first drive. He throws that touchdown pass to Brandon Ayuk in the end zone. It was a horrendous decision. Yes. Kyle Shanahan said it. It, you don't throw that pass. There, he was not open, but it it was a it was a touchdown, and Brock had this sort of like, "Hey man, like I'm a gunslinger, and I do what I want, and I I, I have this confidence, and you can't." It was great, but that's what that throw to Debo was in the end zone against uh, the Ravens. It was the same kind of thing. Like use checks open right in front of me. It's first and ten. I could take that, but I'm going for the touchdown because I'm the MVP and I'm making the statement. It's like, no. No, you need to learn that lesson right freaking now. You're not going to win a Super Bowl making decisions like you made in Jacksonville and in that game. You can't do that. And that was a bad sign when the game started like that. I mean, it's first and 10 from the 15. Don't force that ball into coverage like that. Like, Who the hell do you think you are? Relax, man. Come back to earth. And so that was important for him, that moment, because that was a carryover from Jacksonville. You can't play like that. 
And I don't know. So like that, it didn't get better after that. But I think that was a moment for Kyle to be like, okay, we have that Brock today. We have that Brock today. What am I going to do? Because we're not going to win with that Brock against the Ravens. And obviously Kyle didn't fix it and it all snowballed, but they still can get the number one seed and win the Super Bowl. It's all, this all could be a learning experience if they approach it the right way. Yes. What matters far more is what happens next. Yeah. It's over. It's over. You messed it up. It couldn't have been worse, but it doesn't matter ultimately if you learn from it. And frankly, the Niners are probably going to learn a lot more from this game than the Ravens will. If they face each other again, the Ravens would be like, we got this team's number. We're going to do what we did last time. The Niners should have a whole different game plan on both sides of the ball. I will say that the thing that has made Brock such a revelation and made him so exciting to 49ers fans is the fact that he takes doubles over singles. He doesn't always look to the check down. Even Kyle has talked about like Brock makes some plays that are there, even though they're not totally there. And what I think Kyle means by that is like, it's not totally a safe throw, but if you put the ball in the right spot, it can be. And Brock has made a lot of those plays. That is a good quality, I think, for him to have, but it can get you into trouble sometimes, and I think it did against the Ravens. I don't want to put all this on Brock, though. That, that's my thing with, with football and my analysis in general. The quarterback always gets most of the blame and most of the praise. There needs to be much more uh, co- coach infused in this analysis. You know, when Jimmy was getting all that praise, man, a lot of that deserved to go to Kyle. And when the Niners lost, a lot of that deserved to go to Kyle, too. In this game, I felt like – I really feel like if the Niners face the Ravens in the Super Bowl, the Niners should and can and probably will win. I feel like they just had the wrong game plan, especially on offense. I think their goal – correct me if, I'm, if, you, if you disagree, but I think their goal coming into the game was to prove that Brock was the MVP. And my evidence is the first drive. Six passes in a row. That's a statement. That's a statement in your opening script. Hey, our MVP is not our running back. Our MVP is our quarterback. And he's going to go right down the freaking field and he's going to make the statement on the first drive that he's the MVP and not Lamar Jackson and not Christian McCaffrey. Man, like, win the game. Win the freaking game. That's your only goal. And if it's by giving the ball to Christian McCaffrey 30 times, do it. It's Baltimore. It's the, the game of the freaking year. You gave McCaffrey 14 carries. You made the wrong statement. And I bet you if they face the Ravens again, they won't play like that. That is something that a lot of people have said. They were saying it to me immediately after the game, and they've been saying it every day since. And a lot of people in the Super Chats agree with you. Bill Connolly says, Grant, no more time off for quality control, please. Um, I saw another one here. Where is it? Uh, Right here. What's up, Grant, from Edward Willis? I wish we ran the ball more. Um, I mean, it it felt like, 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 again, like in the Super Bowl, uh, they were up 10 in the fourth quarter, stopped running the ball. It's like, why? Why do you pick these moments to go away from your identity? You're a run-first team. You rank 32nd in pass attempts, and now you want to make this statement against the Ravens. Like, no, no, no. Uh, Gregorius Gregg says, I blame QC Cone for two Brock Purdy interceptions. Do better. I don't think... I think that people are saw the interceptions and said, oh, we should have run the ball after the fact. But I don't think anybody was complaining about them passing the ball when they were going up and down the field, which, by the way, they absolutely were going up and down the field. Right. At, at halftime in this game, which clearly they were still in it because they were down four, they had 16 yeah. passes and 12 runs. That's not like crazy out of whack balance. That's the competitive portion of the game. Unfortunately, Four minutes into the second half, it was 30 to 12 Ravens. So I think that it kind of snowballed. And then ultimately the Niners kept passing because they were down by so much. And so the end result is like, oh, it's really skewed pass versus run. But I don't think it was so out of whack when the game was was still tight. I mean, this is a team that has the best running back in the league. This is a team that won an NFC championship game passing eight times. I understand the game plan worked and the passes were open, but once Brock Purdy made that very, very uncharacteristically bad decision and threw that first pick, I mean, Kyle could maybe think, hey, maybe, you know, the game plan is is right for Baltimore, but it's not right for Brock right now. He's having a nervous day, breakdown on the field. Like, he's 23 years old, and he this is a big stage for him, and he's not ready. So I need to take the game out of his hands right now because he just might throw four picks today if I put the game in his hands, and he did. So it's like after the first pick, you didn't go, you didn't adjust. After the second pick, you just kept going with the game plan. It's like, fine, I understand you You ended up being somewhat balanced, but maybe that was a good opportunity in the second quarter, in the third quarter, 
to lean on Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams and Aaron Banks and run to the left and see where that gets you. Because I think like that's your bread and butter and you're better than Baltimore. You think you're better than Baltimore. So why are you doing this uncharacteristic stuff? Fish and Chip says tendencies are not defensible. Kyle Shanahan has them career, I'm assuming, is that? Would that's what I that would think so. every would coach think. has tendencies? I want to point that out. Uh, Isaac says overreaction. This was a home Christmas game with a horrific game plan, and everything that could go bad went bad. Christmas was a big factor. Why I, not? It shouldn't have been. Why? Dude, <laughs> what does Christmas have to do? Why are you blaming Santa Claus for this? He had nothing to do with this. <laughs> Rudolph was not involved. They played on Thanksgiving and dominated the Seahawks. So, uh, you know, they have experience playing on holidays. The Ravens yeah. had to play on Christmas too. What are you talking about? Right. Matthew Sanders says, silver lining, this happened in the regular season. If we admit Baltimore in the Super Bowl without this preview, we get whooped. This is their got their attention, uh, or this got their attention indeed. Forget that. Attention. That is so arrogant. Like, they were just looking past the Ravens. No, what they did is they learned who the Ravens are. Because their game plans on both sides of the ball were wrong. How they defended Lamar was wrong. And how they tried to attack the Ravens defense was wrong. So maybe now they'll be like, okay, we get it. Like, I, I think this is a lot like the Eagles, man. When they went to face the Eagles in the NFC Championship game, they just got it wrong. So, schematically, the coaching staff. Then the next time they face them, they got it right. It's a very smart coaching staff on the Niners' side. I think they should be able to adjust. But I'm not sure that they'll even face the Ravens in the Super Bowl. The, Ra- the AFC is brutal. It's, yeah, we have no idea who they're going to be. We have no idea. It's way brutal. too early to say. Yeah. Chip says Brock Purdy was mirroring his head coach vibes. Wonder why. I. Again, I don't really think that Kyle, what Kyle did was that wrong. They were moving the ball up and down the field. There's no way that Kyle could have predicted that Brock was going to throw three or four interceptions in the game. Yes, he threw ooh, a bad ooh, ooh. Opening drive. But like w- he was supposed to know that the ball was going to go off Kittle's chest and bounce in the air and get intercepted. And like it was I, it was clear that he was pressing. He said he was pressing. He looked like he was pressing. And yes, they were moving the ball passing, but they were moving the ball running too. And it's like, man. Brock Purdy's 23 and he's pressing. Christian McCaffrey's 27 and he's not because he's freaking built for these moments. And he's, I'm just saying, like, for a quarter, go to the Raheem Mostert and, uh, NFC Championship Green Bay Packers game plan for a quarter. Because you wouldn't have had those interceptions. He'd be like, oh, the Niners lost because they, they turned the ball over five times. Nah, they lost because Brock Purdy threw four picks. And you could say they weren't his fault or they were his fault, but like, run the freaking ball and they don't happen. So hey, they go into halftime at 16 12. They have 16 passes in the first half, 12 runs. They come out of halftime. The first play out of halftime is a run. Unfortunately, to the right. Christian, Christian McCaffrey right. gained a yard. To right? the right. And they completed they the right. Yes, you can run Why? to the right. You don't have to run. Why? To you have to yes, run. Yes, you the- do. Why? Yes, you do. You want to get a positive gain. You run it to the right. Get the hell out of here. All right. So if they Bill run it McKinnis. to the left and it gets stopped, you're going to say, well, why do you keep running to the left? Switch it up Put a little your bit. best foot forward. Put your best foot forward. Toss left. Oh. Hey, man, they did that eventually and they got a touchdown. They got a 39 yard run from Christian McCaffrey. They went right back to it. They had a nine yard touchdown run. Like he averaged seven and a half yards of carry. Go to your bread and butter. It ain't outside zone to the right. That hasn't worked since Mike McGlinchey was freaking 24. So now that the game hasn't plan is run the ball all the time to the left every time. Is that what we think he should have done? That's not what I said. Well, I'm just saying, put your best foot forward. Don't leave. He came out of the half. He tried to run. They gained a yard. They hit a short pass to Kittle for four on second and nine. On third and five, you got to pass. You're not going to run. run, You got to run behind Trent Williams. If you're trying to beat the best team in the league, you got to have a lot of plays where you're running behind Trent Williams. Christian McCaffrey behind Trent Williams. That's your best play. Whatever freaking concept it is. That's it. And you running behind Colton Kivitz and John Feliciano ain't it. And I'm not surprised they gave one yard to the right. I'm just saying, man. And then they, what they do on second down? Passed. And they completed it for four yards. Sweet. Run it on second and nine. You, you can't let Christian McCaffrey have 14 carries in the most important year, that game of the season. You know why? He's your MVP. If they He's ran and gained four yards, you would have been thrilled with that on second down, right? But they passed it and gained four yards, and now so that means they should have run it. What if they ran it and gained less than four yards? What if they ran it and gained 39 like they did frequent? I mean, like they have explosive runs. I don't know, man. I think it was clear your quarterback was pressing. It was clear your running back wasn't. I trust Christian. I think, I trust it's, Christian. I think it's easy to say after the fact because look at what happened in, on that possession, right? Third and five, they have to pass. They passed. It was incomplete. They punt the ball. 
They give up a 23-yard return. And then Mitch Wisnowski, for no reason whatsoever, hits the returner late out of bounds, and they give him 15 more yards. That drive starts at the Niners' 44-yard line. That's where that Ravens drive started. They score the touchdown, and then the first play of the next drive is a Brock interception. Guess who he was throwing for? Christian McCaffrey. Like, and then the game got away from the right. Niners. So all I know is when they ran to the left, it worked. They, he, the dude averaged seven and a half yards a carry. When they ran to the left, it freaking worked. The Ravens don't have a good run defense. They didn't prove they could stop. And that's your best play. Your best play. Toss left. It's been that since freaking 2000. It's been that since Trent Williams has been on the team. Him in space, leading the way, that's your best play. Whatever concept. And you didn't do that? Like, you went to the right behind Colton? Why? Why? Because you're because you you think the Ravens are better than you? You have to trick them. You're they expect you to go. Who freaking cares if they expect you to go to the left? You're better than them. You have Trent Williams. He's a Hall of Fame greatest left tackle of all time. And you had to trick them. Man, that's your whole problem going against the Ravens. You if you really think you're better than them, then act like it. Put your strongest foot forward. Don't try to deceive them. Why? That's soft, weak stuff. That makes you look like you think you're not as good as them. I just, you can't run it to the left every time. They didn't. How many times they run the ball to the left in this game? Seven? They didn't. That's their problem. I'm not saying they have to do it every time, but like, man. First you said the run issue. the ball. I said they did run the ball to start the third quarter. You said, oh, well, they didn't run to the left. They gave, they ran outside zone to the right, which is not their best play. And then they abandoned it on second and nine. They got a four yard throw. Cool. What happened on third down? An incompletion. They threw it off Ronald Darby's face. Remember that? Remember that? It was, it was, it was, he, he threw the ball to Willie Sneed. First of all, how the hell is Willie Sneed getting a target in this game? Willie Sneed? I bet you if they play the Ravens again in the Super Bowl, Willie Sneed isn't even playing. Well, that and was the, a bad read like, by Brock. What is going on? He had Debo coming across in an open window. He actually shouldn't have thrown to Sneed because Sneed opened it up for Debo and Brock made the wrong read. Brock was awful. He was pressing. You needed to take the the the, the game out of his hands, and eventually, hey, are you ready to play? Are, are you ready for this, or do we need to give you the Jimmy Garoppolo treatment and make you throw eight passes? I don't see why they don't do that more. They won a freaking NFC champion, the only NFC championship game they won. They won running forty freaking times. That was like an NFC championship type game. You knew your quarterback was pressing, and it's like, hey, man, well, we got to do, what we got to do, we got to, we got. This is their game plan. It's like, all right, man, well. Enjoy the fourth pick. No, uh, uh, there's the fifth pick. Sorry. Well, the fifth pick was Sam. Yeah, well, because the same might, game plan. Sam Darnold can't play and not throw an interception. How would you know Sam Darnold played unless he threw a pick? He finds a way. Did to we? Play. Did we not get the full Sam Darnold experience in one quarter? The full thing. It's like, oh, look at that arm strength. Oh, he can move a little bit. That was a nice drive. Oh, oh, no. no actually, I never want to see him play. That's enough. That's enough. He in throws one quarter. Five people in the goal line. Of course, it's intercept. It's, it's, we can get to that later. All day, every day, says, imagine Lamar Jackson on this 49ers team. I wanted to. I was telling them to try and trade for him in the offseason. I was willing to trade Bosa to get him. He's awesome. I didn't understand how good Lamar was until I saw him in person. There's something about seeing a player in person. Now I feel like unquestionably the three best quarterbacks in the league are Mahomes, Josh Allen, and him. Maybe Burrow, but he's hurt a lot and he gets he doesn't move like that. I think those three are the game changers of the league. Those three. He he's such he's such a freak. He left Fred Warner in the dust on a scramble before Fred Warner wasn't even close to touching him. It was Dude, that, thir that 30 yard scramble is the best scramble I think I've ever seen. And I mean, I think I've ever seen. It, Steve Young had some great ones too, but damn. And people are like, well, he's not that great of a pocket passer. I don't care, man. I don't care because he's good enough and you can't keep him in the pocket. And once he's outside the pocket, there's no one more dangerous in the league. Even Patrick Mahomes is not as dangerous as Lamar Jackson once they're outside the pocket. Yeah, not not running. He's just because he's so athletic. And that's really And he can throw too. He can throw on the run too. His field vision on the run is impeccable. The he didn't really hurt the Niners with his legs. That 30 yard scramble was his biggest run of the day. And even that wasn't that bad because it chewed up basically all the time that was left in the half. And so the Ravens had to kick a field goal, which I think they were in field goal range anyway before he had that run. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but where Lamar hurt them was avoiding the rush, buying time, and then dudes were wide-ass open on the scramble drill. 
my favorite play of his in this game was when he scrambled up and to the right and hit Justice Hill on the little back to his left and Hill went like for 40 yards. That because once once Lamar's out of the pocket, you see, if you go back and watch that play. Dre Greenlaw just screams over to him. You have to. Whoever you're whoever you're guarding at that time, forget him. Go get Lamar. And all of a sudden, Lamar's like, it's too easy. He's, he's been doing his whole life. He makes you wrong. If you if you stay on your guy, then he's just going to run. And if you come up to get him, he's going to throw it. So it's it's very, very difficult. It's impossible. Uh, Chance 99 says, does Kyle's eagerness to please his father affect his ability to adjust his game plan and scheme in games? Are we dealing with two egos run the ball? Wow, we are diving into some psychiatrist stuff on the program. I have no idea. How could I we have do? no idea. I don't understand, man. <laughs> eagerness to please his father. So the, the assumption here is that the dad made the game plan with the son and the son doesn't want to acknowledge that his dad was wrong. Dude, I don't even know, man. I could. I have to see Kyle in person. I'm not going to start. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's not go there. Hypothesizing about his relationship and his no, no. Sorry. Uh, Rob Watson says Kyle Shanahan partly to blame for Brock Purdy's performance. The last few weeks we've been empty set on crucial short downs and neglected run balance. Ravens were prepared. That's something that uh, my co-host Levin Black said. He didn't like how not only did they not run the ball a lot or enough for him, but also like they were empty a lot of the time. So it was clear that they weren't running the ball. Again, I think you, they were trying to make a statement. Like, we are not that run-first team that you think we are. We're a new team, and we got the MVP quarterback. Like, man, stop. You could have won that game a different way. Stop. It just felt like, again, like, like like Colin Kaepernick missing three throws at the end of the Super Bowl or Russell Wilson throwing the interception. It's like, why are you so concerned about how you win this game? Just hand it to Marshawn. Just hand it to Frank Gore. Just hand it to Christian McCaffrey, man. It doesn't freaking matter. Beat the Ravens. But no, yeah, that's that wasn't the game plan. It had to be. It had to be this way. Quick breaking, new, quick breaking news update that will unite all 49er fans. Russell Wilson has just been benched by the Denver. <laughs> so for who? For uh, I don't know. Let's see. For Jared Stidham. So they, <laughs> he will dress as the number two quarterback. Oh, that things are just going great in Denver. Dude, what a year for Russell Wilson and Jimmy Garoppolo. Just benched. Enough. I will always enjoy Russell Wilson suffering. I'm sorry. I just will. Uh, Tyler says... He's still better than Geno Smith. I don't care. Oh, yeah. Uh, Grant and Stats, I think the better team lost, to be completely honest with both of you. If Brock never threw those interceptions, I believe we win. They sure. threw three picks in the first half and still had a completely viable chance to take the lead in the third quarter. Like, to me, the, the, the turnovers were absolutely the reason why they lost. Even though Lamar played great... If they don't have five freaking turnovers, I still think they win. But we got to acknowledge that the turnovers, I, I don't think they were just bad luck. Like three, you can say three of them weren't his fault, but two throws he made got dropped that were terrible decisions and should have been picks. I think he, I think the Ravens created those takeaways. They weren't just giveaways. The Ravens created them and they have something that's kind of like the Niners kryptonite. Browns have it too. Two really, really, really good linebackers and some good safeties, too. If you have that, and most defenses do not, but if you have that, Brock Purdy's in a tough spot because he's his whole game is anticipatory throws over the middle, and that's dangerous against Cleveland and Baltimore in particular. He, he could do that all day against Philly. They don't have they don't have linebackers and safeties, but no, they don't. And, hey, why did he throw so many picks in training camp? What do the Niners have? He was confused. Clearly, he was confused, which, again, he just he literally turned 24 today. He hasn't seen the variety of defenses that veteran quarterbacks have seen. He's going to get confused sometimes. The, the reason why veteran quarterbacks don't get confused later in their careers is because they've been confused early on and learned from it. So you have to go through these things to eventually get to the spot where you are not going to be caught off guard. Uh, Brother Bob says, after Christian McCaffrey's touchdown, I knew we would continue to run wrong. I just felt like, boom, you got it. You found it. You, you just got a bunch of plays that work. You can go back to them. Why Why not? Why stop? All your big runs for the last two years have gone to the left. No one can stop it. When teams over-pursue, Christian McCaffrey can cut back to the right. Like I'm not saying McCaffrey has to go to the left every time, but that's your point of attack. Your right is not your point of attack. Those guys are getting blown off the ball. McKivitz, he's getting blown off the freaking ball. Not on the left. And if they over-pursue, boom, cut it back. But, like, outside zone to the right, when was the last time that worked it, when Moster was on the team? I don't know. You're telling me they haven't had any good runs to the right all season? They're mostly cutbacks. 
they're mostly cut back. They've had some good runs to the right, but if you try to remember, it's not that many runs that start off to the right. Those are your outside zones and jet sweeps. When was the last time a Debo Samuel jet sweep hit? He just ran for a touchdown a couple weeks ago going to the right against Philly. They put they put what's his face, Hassan Reddick in a blender and he ran for a touchdown to the right. Yeah, that was good. He did well. that was good. <laughs> Matthew Sanders says Trent was hopping mad. He's ready to run the ball. Trent Williams came within like a centimeter of making an incredible play after the interception when he almost rips the ball out of Patrick Queen's hand. That was a play he got hurt on, too, I believe. That hey, would have been I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. We don't know about Trent Williams groin, by the way. You usually find out about injuries the day after the game, but Kyle Shanahan did his press co- his uh, conference call at 10 a.m. instead of his customary 3 p.m. He moved it it's up. A short week. It's a short week or whatever, but that's really convenient for the home for the team because they don't get their results until later in the day. So we'll find out today about Trent Williams. Man, if that lingers into the re- into the postseason, that's a problem. Yeah, you, and if he, if he can't go this week, he said he you know he wanted to go back in. The medical Great. staff said no, which that leads me to believe it's a scarier injury, but we'll find out. Mad Gamer says the Ravens' speed on offense was insane. Why can't the Niners get plays off that fast? The Niners go hurry up sometimes, but the Niners' offense is different. They shift and they motion to give themselves an advantage. You can't do that quickly. That takes time. Well, that's great, but I think it's it's nice to be able to go fast uh, sometimes too because that creates an advantage, and sometimes you have to. And I don't understand why they were going so slow in the fourth quarter, down 21 with Brock on the field, and then when Brock came out, Darnold went in, all of a sudden they went up tempo. Like, what was that about? Also, third and goal from the one, down two scores. You need a touchdown. It's still a game. Again, they don't hand the ball off. They call a pass from the shotgun for Sam Darnold, and he takes a sack. Why? Because, dude, think about it. If he throws a touchdown pass there and he comes out of that game with like a 130 rating and two touchdowns and no picks and, and he leads a comeback, dude, Kyle, you created a quarterback controversy. Like, what, what was that call? No quarterback controversy. Get out of here. Come on. There's no quarterback controversy. I think he passed it there because they were out of timeouts, if I remember correctly. People aren't gonna people aren't gonna notice that Sam Darnold played really well against the Ravens and Brock Purdy played really poorly. Like that was on the line with that one pass. And it doesn't matter. You notice? One one decent it doesn't pass. matter. No, it people doesn't matter. matter. You know, people wouldn't have talked about that all week. That would have been the conversation locally, nationally on every television show. Hey, Sam Darnold looked really good. Crazy Sam looked great. Crazy people might have talked about it. So you're just going to throw out everything that Brock has done. Going to throw none of that counts because Sam Darnold. Nah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But people would be like, man, I don't know. Like Brock Purdy, he's still really young and he's had a really good run, but he was awful against the Ravens. He seemed like he got exposed. And then Darnold came in and just example that a lot of players can look good on this team and a lot of quarterbacks have looked good. And if Purdy's gotten figured out, maybe Darnold gives him a little something more. I mean, he's got a stronger arm. And, Dude, that would have happened, but you know what? It didn't because you know what? Sam Darnold sucks. I'm so sorry. He does. Yes, he does. He does. He does. Yeah, but and- frankly, he was better against the Ravens than Brock was. He was. Brock if you was awful. If you listened to KMBR, the Niners radio broadcast, when Sam came in and he threw a couple passes, they were, oh, oh, he threw a dart. That was, uh-huh. yeah, he throws the ball harder than Brock Purdy. Like, this is not new information. Everybody throws the ball harder than Brock Purdy. Did you hear what Kyle said? I asked Kyle after the game, what did you think of Darnold? I, th- I thought it was real good. It was real good. You know, we we, we re- real command of the offense, let a touchdown drive. You know, wish I had to go look back and see what happened. That sack. I wish I hadn't taken a sack there, but I thought he was real good. Like, first of all, no, he wasn't. But if you think he was real good, like, you don't think Purdy was real good because, frankly, he was real bad. Yeah. Like, and well. he was real bad. And that was a real test against a real defense. And that's now going to be in the back of Kyle's mind and fans' mind. Like, hey, if Purdy starts doing this again, if he has another meltdown against a team with good linebackers and safeties, is it time to pull the plug and go to Darnold? No, never. There is no universe. And by the way, a real test when it was 33 to 12. I'm sure the Ravens were not playing their tightest coverage. Like, let's factor that in, too. It's not like they were like, hey, Brock couldn't do anything, though. Brock, Brock Brock had the ball in the fourth quarter down 33 to 12, and he was taking sacks, getting hit, doing nothing. Yeah, if your argument is who was better that day, clearly it was Sam. But that doesn't mean that Sam is the better option, the better choice. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But, but I did say Sam was clearly better than Brock in this game, and that brings – I just – you That's don't it. unsee that. You don't unsee that. Yeah. That's it, full stop? Okay, until Brock has another stinker and you're wondering, no. is he pressing? Is he no. going to snowball? 
Okay. So how many right. stickers has Sam Darnold had? Until Brock has the same number, then we can talk about a quarterback change because Sam has never played anywhere close to as good as Brock Purdy has played. In All right. Any- well, if Brock Purdy throws two picks in the first three series of a playoff game, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I would. If still- he does that again, if he does that again, we'll see what happens. Yeah, like. Even if he does. Because we know. We know he's a snowballing presser. We know that this is in him. The, the, the poised, young, mature guy, yeah, when things are going well. But when things go bad on a big stage, nah, he's going to press. And it could get worse. And so It could get worse as the game goes along. Your answer. My, I, I didn't sign Sam Darnold. I didn't freaking sign Sam Darnold. But you can't let that guy lose games for you, man. You can't let him throw four picks in a game ever again. He's not that guy. He's not a game changer. People be like, oh, Peyton Manning did. Joe Montana did. Those are game changers. Teams win because of them. Brock isn't like that, man. He's a game manager who makes a few plays a game. You are not allowed to throw four picks. Because you didn't offset it with any touchdowns. It's all really those people you mentioned insane. that threw six picks in a game. I bet you they threw some touchdowns, too. I bet you they did something good. Oh, so does game. Brock. He's got 20. He did nothing. He had zero picks in that. He had zero touchdowns in that game. I think we are overreacting to a bad game from Brock Purdy. Yes, it was a bad game. It was. That those happen. You you have to be allowed to have a bad game. Your 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 standard cannot be you can never have a bad game ever or we're going to bench you for a guy who's thrown more turnovers, who's had more turnovers than starts. He got in- benched. Pretty much. He got benched in this game. And Kyle Shanahan called a pass for Sam Darnold on third and goal from the one because Kyle was uh trying to promote chaos. I don't care what you say. No. Kyle was trying to promote chaos with that pass on third and goal from the wall. Why would he knew? want that? Because what Kyle is. How does it benefit him? How does it benefit him? Yes, because he likes Sam Darnold. He believes in Sam Darnold. And you don't know how he feels about Brock Purdy. You don't know how he feels about Brock Purdy. We he don't? has to play Brock Purdy. He has to play Brock Purdy. Know. Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy, how Brock Purdy many- is the AAA pitcher you called up that week who's throwing a no-hitter. You can't take him out of the game. But then it, now he's loaded the bases and given up like three or four runs in one inning. And Kyle's like, well, man, he still took a triple-A pitcher to me. I got this guy I paid $20 million, whatever. This guy I've loved for five years who I think is going to be great. I want to see it. I, I want to see it. I want to be what very his, clear. What would his quarterback rating have been if he had thrown a touchdown pass on third and goal from the one? 130? What would it have been? I want to be very clear. I, I make sure I understand you. Your official position is, Kyle wanted Sam Darnold to throw a touchdown pass because Kyle wants to create a quarterback controversy and wants to bench Brock Purdy for Sam Darnold. Is that what you're no, saying? I'm not saying he wants to bench Brock Purdy for Sam Darnold, but he wants the conversation to be out there. What? Is Brock Purdy that good? Why? Is Sam Darnold? Why? I don't know. You ask Kyle. Why did he call a freaking pass on third and goal from the one for Sam Darnold behind an offensive line missing like all the starters? Why? So you want him to run behind their offensive line, missing all the starters? Third and goal from the one? Third and goal from the one. You have Christian McCaffrey. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. When have they passed? With their backup quarterback? The backup quarterback. I, dude, I thought it was highly irregular. But, hey, man, you see it differently? That's all right. You don't have to agree. I don't know. I thought that was interesting, man. You called a pass for Sam? He would already let a touchdown drive? Man, his numbers would have been great if he had completed that pass. I'm sure Kyle called it thinking Sam was going to complete the pass, not take a sack. I think yeah. What well, he I think sack. Well, he's Sam. Yeah, he wanted to score the touchdown. The real interesting he question. He believes in Sam. Had, he believes in Sam. If they would have scored, would he have put Brock in the game? And no, no. one. Asked him. No, no. He was- believes in Sam. He lost confidence in Brock in that game. That happened. Maybe he'll get the confidence back when Brock, you know, puts 400 yards and four touchdowns on Washington this week, which is gonna happen. But in this game, Kyle lost confidence. We all did. Brock lost confidence. Isaac says, apart from everything going wrong on offense, can we acknowledge that penalties also kept the Ravens in the game? The Ravens were pedestrian prior to third uh, third quarter, I guess you would say. Yeah, they had over 100 yards of penalties. Like 100. Tashawn Gibson had three penalties on one drive, for God's that sake. True. That is true. They've that had penalty true. problems all year, too. There have been a lot of games where they just, you know, just. Didn't that happen against Cleveland, too? That happened against Cleveland. So they had a bunch of penalties against Cleveland. Yeah, uh, I'll go back and check really quickly. I think they did. Been a thing for them, particularly in losses. Um, let me see. I think when they face a team, like, because the Niners are bullies. When they face a team that can bully them a little bit, that's as tough or tougher than them, it brings out, it, it freaks the Niners out a little bit. They're not used to it. For 105 in the. Against Cleveland. Cleveland. Now, Cleveland yeah. had 13 for, for 119. For sure. Oh, maybe for sure. Partly that sure. crew, but. 
it, it's been a, the penalties have definitely been a thing. Uh, TJ Leaf says Lamar cemented his MVP bid by stomping out Purdy and his bid. Ravens bullied him, out coached him, out classed him in Santa Clara. Face the music. I mean, that, you have to say that, that in that game. Is that the real TJ Leaf from UCLA, basketball player? Hey, I'm a big fan. Big I don't fan. Know. TJ, thanks for, for TJ. Hey, absolutely. Hey. There's no. They whooped him in every facet. They whooped him, and you you can't say I don't know how you could say anything otherwise. Now, I don't think the 49ers would have lost if they didn't turn the ball over, but they did. And like you said, the Ravens forced those. They yeah. deserve credit yeah. for those. I would have liked the Niners to say this because it, it doesn't cost you anything to say the Ravens were better than us today. We'll get better. We'll, if we face them again, we'll, we'll beat them. But what the Niners essentially said was, we beat ourselves. Like, that's not humbling yourself. That's not a reality check. That's just like, you know what? It was one of those things. We'll get them next time. To me, that if you say the Raiders are be- the Ravens were better than us today, it forces you to change and do something different. If you say we beat ourselves, it's just like, well, we just got to execute the same game plan next time. No, you don't. You need to execute a different game plan next time. I think both are actually true. I think you could execute a different game plan, and I think if you had executed the one that you had, you would have won. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have required... Brock to be a little bit better, I guess. Yes, absolutely. Uh, don't have a head coach who can change a game when it's bad. This is another um, thing I'd like to talk about because everyone points to that a whole stat about how they're 0-37 and when they're down by eight or more in the fourth quarter. And some people even say, and this is the one I really don't understand, this offense isn't built to come from behind. Well, Kurt Banker said that. He was on the team. He yeah, in I the know. Installation meetings. He was in the quarterback meeting. So I, mean, I, I don't care. Like, we've seen so many stupid okay. takes players david carr said that they should bench jalen hurts for marcus mariota just because you play doesn't mean everything you say is great explain to me how an offense that can literally score a touchdown on any play from anywhere on the field is not built to come from behind because they don't invest in pass protection and their drop back passing game is the least voluminous part of their playbook after play action passing and running that's how but but we've and they don't practice it very much we had we if they can score on any play from anywhere on the field, and they're uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. then they wouldn't be 0 and 38 or whatever when they're down eight in the fourth quarter. Man, they would have one freaking comeback. One, down one, down they would have one, more. one, one, they don't have one, not one. But not that one. doesn't, I don't, you're saying it hasn't happened, so it could never happen. All right, man, let me know when it happens because it's been 38. Would you feel me? Would you be? Would you feel better about it if it was one and thirty-seven? Would, yes. would that you, one. you wouldn't bring it up? One. One. It'd be like they did it one time. They did, they did it one because I know, I know, I know the numbers are like it doesn't happen very often. It's like a seven percent chance for the Niners is zero percent chance, zero point zero percent chance that they're coming back if they're down eight. Man, you're 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 the the number one offense in the league. You got an offensive genius. You got an MVP quarterback. You MVP running back. Like it should happen one freaking time, but it doesn't because they're not built for it. They don't have the offensive line for it. They don't have the playbook for it. They not be built for it if they can score a touchdown I anywhere. I just told you. I just told you it's like zoolander when he explains why bugatu exploits male models to zoolander's face and he's like but why male models and he's like really i i i just that was the whole point of the story i'm sorry that was uh, that was an ad lib david david ben, ben still was, forgot his line and so he just <laughs> that was an ad lib in the show really i i just i just told you that i did <laughs> sorry good david coming so good in that movie um, but I just, I, I think that it hasn't happened. That's indisputable. We, we've seen the history, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. And by the way, it doesn't mean that it's ever going to, that they're going to need it to happen. They could go through the whole playoff run and never be down eight in the fourth quarter anyway. So true. that's, that's a thing. True. Hey, they didn't, they lost the Super Bowl not because they couldn't come from behind. They couldn't hold a 10 point lead. That's why they lost the Super Bowl. And that's, that's they could lose and not face that. You're right. Yeah. Like, well, that's true. All those can be true. Matthew Sanders says Baltimore defensive backs were hunting, getting away from them. Trent and McCaffrey were fired up. Go to them. Defense was gassed. Needed a spell. Run the ball. Grant is right. The time of possession was not. Oh, actually, you know what? I haven't checked at the end of the game. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. If Brock does this in a playoff game, Kyle's running the ball. That's all I'm saying. I know Kyle would would not do what he did in a playoff game. If if they if the season was on the line, which it freaking wasn't, Kyle wouldn't have called the game that way. I guarantee it. Kyle's good. He's a good coach. That was a terrible game. He's so much better than that. It's so much better than that. The time won't do that again. Pretty much even. Ravens had it for 31 minutes. Niners had it for 28. Um, Because the Ravens didn't have... The Ravens were always on a short field. So they didn't really have long drives because the Niners kept frigging 
setting them up to score. Uh, Bill Kennedy says Niners need offensive line help. Do you think there will be any Trent Williams types available in the draft? Yeah, will they come out every year? I mean, they come out every year. The Trent Williams, Williams types. types. I don't know if they're going to be any Hall of Fame offensive linemen in the so draft. Funny, man. The that's, like a, that's like a basketball team being like, man, we need a center. Let's go get a Bill Russell type, man. <laughs> Are there any Bill Russells get, out there? Let's go get a sack type, man. We need a center. Like, nah, probably not, man. Not where the Niners are going to be picking. <laughs> no. DNA Music says, if people can admit that the game plan was wrong, it's time to have to have. No, it's time to view Brock Purdy through a sober lens. Christian McCaffrey is the engine. Brock Purdy does not have to be the star. He's still in development. This can't be wasted on that. Well, they've already like they've already gone that route. There, he's the quarterback. Trey Lance was going to be the quarterback, or Brock Purdy was going to be the quarterback. So that they were developing somebody, no matter what. This just reminds me a lot of the Seahawks from 10 years ago when it was Russ and Marshawn. Okay. Russ was maybe you could say that Russ was the MVP because he was a quarterback, but it wasn't let Russ cook. That is not how they freaking played football. Not at all. It was it was Marshawn. You were the engine of the offense, and Russell, you take your shots. You get about 20 to 25 throws. Some of those are going to be deep shots, and there's gonna be very big plays, and you are gonna be the difference in the game, but we're not letting you cook. OK, and I felt like that's what the, that was the game plan against the Ravens. We're going to let Brock cook on national television on Christmas. He's going to make a beautiful Christmas dinner and prove that he's the MVP. Like, no, 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 no. Maybe in like three, four years. Not now. He's not ready to cook. Christian McCaffrey is the chef. Let him let Christian cook. I think they learned their lesson. I, I, I highly doubt Brock Purdy's going to throw four picks in a playoff game. That's not going to happen. Kyle won't let it happen. Or happen. maybe Brock just will be better and make the right reads sure. in that throw four interceptions. Sure. Uh, sure. Juan says, happy 24th birthday to our franchise quarterback, Brock Purdy. And the very next super chat is Jadis Jat. Last week, I said I was waiting for the other shoe to drop for 13. Grade said that I was being pessimistic. Grant, what are your thoughts? Was I right? See, that's what I oh. mean. Oh, there oh, were great. people waiting in the weeds for Brock to have a bad game. And then when he did, they could pop out and say, see, I told you, but if he had a good game, they would have just stayed waiting in the weeds. I mean, I told you what? Like, no one's saying I told you he sucks. Some people say I told you he's not the next Joe Montana. I told you he's not necessarily the MVP of the league. Like, that's fair to say because, man, the the Brock Purdy hype train has gone, I mean, has left the freaking – building it's, it's it's a little ridiculous what some people have said about brock after like it's not even a season and a half of him playing i think it's fair for some people to be like you know what you guys got ahead of yourselves a little over your skis let's come back to reality no one's rooting for brock to fail he's going to be the quarterback of this team for a long time sam's not taking his freaking job but i think it's fair to say let's come back to reality on this guy i think if you were comparing him to hall of famers that was a mistake by you but also as i pointed out earlier in the show not you yeah no uh, as I pointed out in the earlier in the show, I don't think you can say that this game proves he's not going to be a Hall of Famer because we've seen Hall of Famers having games exactly like this. Yeah, but we don't need to start talking Hall of Fame. I think we've been doing this with as Niners analysts since I've been on the, the beat, man. Colin Kaepernick got crowned too fast. Brock Purdy got crowned too fast. Jimmy Garoppolo got crowned too fast. These guys will prove themselves. If, he's, if Brock Purdy's still doing this in 2022, Wow. If he can do this for three years in a row, then that's that. I mean, that's pretty much the mark of an elite quarterback. You know, the league has seen you. They, they've tried every freaking adjustment. You've responded every freaking time. You're elite. But a, a, a season and a half? Not yet. He'll, and, 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 and fi, fi, he'll prove himself in the playoffs. If he wins the Super Bowl this year, no one's going to freaking care that he lost to the Ravens in this on Christmas. So it's all in front of him. It's still too early. And no one's writing him off. That's why I said I want to wait at least two years before I give my franchise quarterback oh, yeah. um, yeah. because of that. And, and part of this is this game, this terrible, terrible game. And it was terrible. Yeah. is part of deciding where he goes from here and where he ultimately ends up. Official BNA okay. music says we should have used Brock's speed in the run game. Just as fast as Lamar. I was told well done. Well done. Official BNA music. It yeah, turns out some of those stats may have been exaggerated just a little bit. Josh Wyatt. YouTube channel member, shout out to you and all the YouTube channel members. Uh, if you want to become a member of my channel, the Gold Standard channel, it's less than three dollars a month. You get custom emojis, you get membership badges, you get priority comment response. Please do and support the channel. 
Uh, Josh says, we spent seven years calling out Kyle for being a quarterback destroyer and not trusting. And when he finally shows faith in a quarterback in a game that doesn't matter, you say he should have gone full Jimmy Garoppolo mode. Try again. I disagree with your premise that like asking him to hand off for a while and let Christian McCaffrey be the tip of the spear for a quarter or two would ruin Brock's confidence. Like what ruined Brock's confidence is making him keep executing the game plan while he's pressing that he can't execute and have him get throw four picks and get another stinger and get benched and have Sam Darnold play better than him against the same free. Like that is traumatic. I was just saying, man, like take, <laughs> take the pressure off the shoulders for like a quarter considering he was clearly pressing. I don't think that's ruining a quarterback's confidence. I think that's helping a quarterback. I think that's good coaching. No, what I think I, what I think Josh is saying is like, you wanted them to run the ball and go to the Jimmy Garoppolo plan because like clearly Kyle didn't trust Jimmy. So he took the ball out of his hands, but Kyle is showing that he trusts not for life by not, not for life for Brock. I'm not for life for Brock for a quarter. Mm -hmm. He was pressing. He needed to settle down. He was rattled. I'm not saying like, okay, well, he's a fraud, you know, never trust him again. No, nah, man, just let him calm down. Oh, it was a huge freaking stage. There was a lot at stake. His MVP candidacy. Uh, who's the best? Like all that stuff, you know. Is there any more crap we can pile on this case? You know, what I'm saying? it was like that moment for him. It was he. He was freaking out. He was uh, my cousin Vinny. You need to take a little bit off his plate for a minute, for fifteen minutes. You got Zoolander and my cousin Vinny on the program. Well done by you, K. Your your biological clock. Their lives. Is there anything else we can pile? Yeah, that. Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Uh, Kate Gilson says Kyle Hamilton drank Brock Purdy's milkshake. He absolutely did. And he got hurt later in the game. I, I think he's going to be okay, though. That Matthew Sanders says the only, the only thing that Sam Darnold did right was target the best wide receiver, Ayuk. Ayuk was kind of a ghost early in this game, man. He got most of his why. yards in garbage time. I'd like to know why. I want to watch the film and see what Baltimore was doing because clearly they made it their business to take away Ayuk, which is something you have to do. Otherwise, you lose to the 49ers. <sighs> Elite Archer 23. Kyle can't game plan. <laughs> Deep side. He's a fake ass genius. These issues Ooh. are there way before Purdy. Common denominator is baby boy Kyle. Ooh, that was harsh. Harsh. Didn't harsh. seem to have a problem against the Cowboys defense early in the year when they put 40 plus on them. Does that not count? Like, don't be a victim of the thing that just happened. This idea that Kyle Shanahan can't game plan against top defenses, that somehow he's not really a good play caller, it's its just incorrect. It's flat wrong. Jim Schwartz owns him, him. Okay. So that's one. And so now the Ravens the Ravens had a real good game plan for him. That's, that's a tough one for him. Um, he does a really good job of exploiting linebackers and safeties and coverage, but teams that have, like, the, the, the Cowboys don't have those. Um, the Eagles don't have those. But those teams do, and Kyle didn't have answers for him. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Because he's, you know, he's the best. Kyle Shanahan is not a good offensive play card. That's the take coming up. Because they lost one game to the to the Ravens. That's it. Like, I just, I think we're overreacting. Uh, Todd says, Niners ignored Ayuk till the end, plus no screen game. No, they, they ran some screen passes. I mean, poor Debo <laughs> almost got killed. And then instead of getting killed, bounced off of Marlon Humphrey and ran for six yards on one of the most incredible plays of the game. They ran some screens in the game. They just, they weren't really that effective. I want to watch the film and see what was going on with Ayuk. Like, why was he not getting the ball? He's Because usually when you watch the All-22, he's open every play. Every time. So I'd like to see what happened there. How do you not... I mean, the, the Ravens must have done something. It's the only thing I can, I can consider. Because Purdy always looks to Ayuk. Fish and chips. The shit hands blow up a player's career in one blink. Whose career is blown up? <clears throat> RG3. Nobody's, nobody's career is blown up. Chris says, Grant, why don't you watch the film before you freak out on Brock Purdy? I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I do want to. Um, my NFL Plus I'm subscription is, is just... I don't need to watch the All-22 to know that he was pressed and had a terrible game. I'm not saying he's going to press. <clears throat> I think he's going to do great against Washington. I don't think he's going to do that again this year. I think we just saw the worst of Brock Purdy, which is informative. Now we've seen... I don't... It's hard to play worse than he did. We know what what <clears throat> when it can look like when it goes bad. Good to know. Fish and Chips says, take a drink. Are you okay? You're getting emotional. <laughs> it's cold out here, man. Fish and Chips says, once Kyle Shanahan sees his system failing, he wants another. Keith says, 
Sister. Third and one was ridiculous. Oh, I guess he was scared to run behind Trent's replacement. James Kelce says, Brock Purdy has had a very good season. He has defied logic and convention. With that said, I still think he'll be a backup in two years. It's not out of the question. but You know you what know, I'm not- He's getting hurt a lot. He's left the last two games. He, I, I don't know. I, I still think he has some things to prove, man. Yes, I think I would agree with I you. Think he does. You're tripping if you think Kyle Shanahan wants a quarterback controversy, according to Matthew Sanders. I I'm agree. tripping. I'd be tripping. Keith Murphy says the Ravens, like the Browns, have a unique personnel that can do things that most teams can't. And that's yep. like we can also give credit to the Ravens instead of saying, oh, it's a deficiency on Kyle Shanahan. He can't game plan against good defense. How about, hey, the other team just did a matchup. really good job. It's a tough matchup. They have good coaches and they have the, the personnel you need to match up with the Niners. Um particularly because of Purdy. Like, he is physically limited. He does live over the middle of the field primarily, and he's great at those intermediate throws over the middle. Great at them. You got to take those away. Most teams can't. Freaking can't. A couple of teams can. They're in the AFC, and the Niners may never face them again. But if they – it's so funny that Joe Flacco and, like, Joe Flacco could be standing in, in the Niners' way again this year. It could be the Niners and the Browns in the Super Bowl, and I think that would be great. I think it'd be wonderful. God, don't give me those flashbacks. I just brought up, if you're watching on the stream, you can see the Brock Purdy passing chart. He did have some nice completions outside the numbers, yeah. uh, particularly right on the boundary on the left side. I, I like that. I but hope you that- see where he wants to be, though. You see exactly where he wants to be. Right over the middle. More towards the middle of the field than the edges of the field, yes. And he did hit some, man. He hit some right in the, the 15-yard range. Four, five, six. He had a but, bunch of passes. Yeah, I mean, 15 yards, one, two, three, four, five, like eight passes, more than 15 yards down the field. Um, didn't have too many deep down the right side of the field. For wait, why does he go to the right? He never, he, he's like such a left. It's okay, though. It's fine. It's his thing. He likes to roll left, too, which is really weird for a right-handed quarterback. He, he um, does. So that's really weird. All right, let's get to some more of the Super Chats. Uh, NG49 says, Niners got smacked in front of the world, but I'd rather they lose a big game now and have the opportunity to regroup and get humbled going into the postseason. Did they get humbled? I'm sorry, when you say we, we, we beat ourselves, I don't, that doesn't seem like a humble thing to say. That's my one thing. But it's what you, you never, that's what you say, right? I just feel like it's, the humble thing is to say, Eagle, uh, Ravens are better than us that day. They won't be better than us the next time we face. That's it. That's it. Mad Gamer 4127 says, Grant, you sound like a crazy conspiracist. Conspiracist. Elevated. I, bring it here. I like to bring it. Edgar says, Kyle Shanahan put Brock Purdy in such difficult situations during the game by trying to demonstrate his geniusness. Good word. Good word. Good word. Geniusness. I like it. <laughs> geniusness and conspiracist and back to back comments. Euro- is, it, is it fair for me to say that that would not have been the game plan and that's not would have been the, that would not have been the approach in a playoff game? There's no way Kyle lets Brock Purdy throw four picks in a playoff game. That's all I'm saying. We know Kyle. There's how no way he, he lets that happen. How would he do it? How would he have you stopped? Know? By run, by running the football a lot of times, just keep handing it off to Christian McCaffrey like he did with Raheem Mostert in the NFC Championship game. Like that. Like that. <laughs> Grant That's why you is, won the ball. Euro says Grant is talking pure logic. Stats responding with all emotion. I can clearly tell. I'm the, the one yelling. Big fan from Arc for years, Grant. What what emotion am I responding with? Euro? I'm the one being emotional today. I'm singing and yelling. I'm clearly unhinged. What have Everyone I said agree with Rob? Illogical. I would like Please let me know what, what I've said that's illogical. Maybe I can respond. Keith Murphy says, I would say give Purdy some time to crack 0-38. There's a lot of Nick Mullen, C.J. Beathard, and Jimmy Garoppolo in those games. True. Yeah, no Yes, doubt. but also the entire rest of the league has the entire rest of the league's quarterbacks on the other side. That includes starters, backups, whatever. So I don't think you can just wave it away and say, well, it's been Nick Mullins and C.J. Like, like Some of those quarterbacks like, on the other side suck too. Like Jalen Hurts isn't even that good, and he's done this this year, come, come from like 10 down in the fourth quarter. I, I just think – it, until they do it once, it's fair to bring up. When they do it one time, I won't talk about it anymore. Beats and Meats says, Ravens corners were jumping every pass. Have you ever seen Brock do a pump fake ever? Yes, I have seen Brock Purdy do a pump fake. Adam Gard- Gardner says, we'll be fine. We left 14 points in the field with the red zone picks, and we constantly let the Ravens have a short field to score with our turnovers. It was just a bad day, easy to fix. 
I don't think that's entirely unreasonable. Edgar says, as good as Kyle Shanahan is, he put Brock Purdy in difficult situations in the game trying to show his creativity. I feel like you said that already, Edgar. You but did, but you said geniusness the first time, and I like geniusness better than creativity. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. James West. <laughs> It must be pointed out it's not just the Ravens game. Brock had a stretch of three games this season where he showed a tendency in the opposite direction of franchise quarterbacks. Five interceptions, two fumbles. Yes, Brock Purdy has not been great every single game. Guess what? That applies to every quarterback in the league. No, but I think what he's saying is that in the in a, some, in some of his not-so-great games, he was frankly, like, he melted down. And but so that's in the back of your mind in a playoff game if he throws one pick in the first quarter. Like, is this one of those Brock games or is he going to settle down and come out of it and play better? Like that's what Lamar, to me, I thought Lamar came out pretty over ramped as well. He wasn't great in the first two drives. He took a safety and then he settled down and played like an MVP, which Brock couldn't do. So I think that's just in the back of your mind now is, is Brock going to melt down or is he going to come out of this? Brock has only had three games this year with multiple interceptions too. So just keep that in mind. It's not like, well, once he throws one, he throws a bunch like, no, that is his whole not- career is a small sample size, though. His whole career is a small sample size. Right, so when he does something like this, you're like, is this a pattern? I don't know that it is, but he's done it a couple of times now. The and overwhelming sample says that it's not so far. Maybe that could change, but so far, I don't think it, I think we could say. But that still, he- though, if, you, you, if he throws a pick on his on the first drive of a playoff game, you can't tell me you're not going to say you're not going to be a little nervous. Like, uh oh. Is this a here we go again kind of thing? Or you're like, no, I got total confidence in Brock. We're good. He threw a pick. It's fine. It's Brock Purdy. MVP. I would be nervous regardless. <laughs> <laughs> That's just you. That's just how you are. I feel yeah. it. I feel it. Okay. Uh, yeah. West Coast Jay, I want to get through these because I know we got to run. West Coast Jay right. says Purdy's poor performance made Lamar look better than it actually was. Christian McCaffrey or Tyreek for MVP. Todd Tran says no running back screens. First interception is on Kyle. Play did not have a route to occupy the safety on that side. And Purdy was benched. Because getting gun shy, ball not coming out. I don't think that's true. If anything, Purdy kept throwing. You, use check was open underneath. Use check was open underneath. The, he he didn't have to throw into the end zone there. That wasn't the read. I agree. Matthew Sanders says uh, Ayuk is a pure receiver. When he cooks, he's a killer. Really curious how open he was when BA has five catches. It seems like we always win. Would love to know. I'd have to go I'll back and up. watch to know for yeah. sure. Brother Bob says I was at the NFC Championship game when Jimmy threw it eight times. God, that that was such scary. that was such a legendary moment for Kyle. Like, I am winning this game, and there's nothing you can do about it, Jimmy. I am not letting you take this from me. This is my moment. It was simultaneously disrespectful to the Packers and to his own quarterback. James Welsh said, Rob, did you watch Purdy in college? I did. I'm referring to the other player I know, and I still see him lurking. Purdy never had a four interception game in college, by the way. But he um, did have a bit of a turnover issue in, in college. Which is one of the reasons he fell to the seventh uh, round, not just his stature. Brother Bob, I was at the Super Bowl when Kyle Shanahan let Jimmy Garoppolo throw with a lead. You know what, brother? You've been there to too. Games, man. Shout out to yeah, you. Man. Shout out to you, man. Hit me up next time. I was there. Willie Black played into the Ravens' hands. We do that too. All young first meeting. Focus on getting to him and less on run. Plan worked. I don't quite. In the Ravens' hands. That. We do that. Uh, all young first meeting focus on getting to him and let's all run playing work. Yeah, I don't know. I don't uh, know. Sorry, man. I apologize. Chad Talley says part of the plan was to get their tape of the Ravens for the future. Winning was a bonus, but you don't even know that you're going to play the Ravens again. That's yeah. the thing. And because not, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say you want to win this game because then you only have to beat the commanders and you clinch the number one seat. Yeah. So I think that they now did. Now you want- have to beat the Rams. Like that's right. not a given. It's not a given. That's the scary part. And yeah. look, the Rams are playing really well, but but don't worry about that yet. Play the Commanders. It's Jacoby Brissett this week. The news came out right before we went on the air. It's going to be Jacoby Brissett for the Commanders. He has beaten the 49ers in the past. One game against them that he won with the Colts. I just looked it up before the show started. It went to overtime. and the Colts. Oh, had- Brian Hoyer was the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was 2017. Um, so I already have Ajita about that. See, that's why you can't judge me by whether or not I worry because I'm always worried. That's just that yeah. might have been the the final Brian Hoyer game. I think that might have been it. For him. Oh geez, that was the last straw. Jacoby <laughs> Brissett ended the career of Brian Hoyer. All right. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. Sorry we uh had to wait till the end to get to the super chats. I don't like to make people wait when you donate. Uh but sorry about that. Somehow that's how that's how I was yelling the whole time. Blame Grant. That's what everyone likes to do anyway. Grant, thank you. 
Make sure you like and subscribe to both channels, everybody. Please rate, review, and follow the Gold Standard Podcast Network. Uh, I will talk. This is the last time I'm going to talk to you in 2023. Oh, I'm getting nostalgic. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be talking about the Niners being one step closer to the number one seed next week. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. We'll talk soon.